thank God for the opportunity that we're going to be going into a course that will help us to know the end of the age, how it will be. So please pay attention because this course, 314, the things to come, what next? What are the things that are surely, surely proposed that they will come to pass? What are they? When it says what next? We don't know when this part of the world, this part of time we are in, we don't know when it comes to an end. So the Lord gave us a compass of things that are to come. And I want to encourage every one of us, young and old minister, not yet a minister under training, intercessor, if you know these things, it will help you to know how to pray in the sense that you're not going to pray off point. You're going to pray in point. You're going to pray inside the will of the Father. Let's pay attention and get into the cause. Father in heaven, the great I am who I am. Thank you for the opportunity. Here we are after this awesome crossover. We're now at a place where you want us to understand the things to come so that we know how to prioritize our lives, what to focus on, what to occupy ourselves with. Lord, we just pray that your spirit will bring forth this word in the fullness of your counsel. Give us understanding. Take the things of Yeshua and show us now. Lord, we bless you in Yeshua's name. Amen. So, cause 314, the things to come. What next? Today we're going to take a prologue in lesson one and an introduction. Brothers and sisters, this is an exciting time to live. Why do we say so? We are an exceptionally favored set of Christians who the Lord has ordained to be part of the end time church, the Omega church. And many believers tend to think that, well, the best of the church was in Acts of the Apostle. And they think, well, they look at back and say, those days, those powerful days, they heal the sick, they deliver the oppressed, they, they, they preach and 5,000, 3,000 were saved. Brothers and sisters, the Alpha Church or the first century church was the beginning of time. It is not in Elohim's uh, way of doing things that he starts something powerfully and then allows it to just end anyhow. No. We need to think outside the box. What does the scripture say? The scripture doesn't say that the end time church is going to be you know, less in glory than the beginning. Rather, on the other hand, evidence in scripture points that the end time church, I'm talking about the remnant church, is going to be clothed with the glory of the Lord. Look at Ephesians 5 verse 25. Husbands love your wives even as Yeshua also loved the church and gave himself for it. And look at verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but it should be holy and without blemish. So the Lord has a purpose. That's why he's releasing the potent power of the word to cleanse his church, purify it, so that the church will be radiant, glorious, clothed with his glory and his person to present it to himself like a wedding uh, on a wedding day. This is what the Lord is doing. It is true that some parts of the church don't seem so nice now, don't seem so godly now, but part of it is because over the years, a lot of people veered off the new covenant or they take new covenant, they mix it with old covenant or they take the new wine of the uh, the, the new covenant, they mix it with the old one of Christian religion. Among them are those who, you know, go to look for Old Testament priestly paradigm where the, the priest is a, 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 a mediator between a holy God who is far and an unholy people and he stands in between them and they have to wear special robes to, to mark that uh, standing. But that's not the New Testament. That's not what the Bible shows us. It doesn't show us that kind of dichotomy. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is at work in his church to prepare the church, the church that will close out this age, and it's not an organization, it's not a denomination, it is a remnant, and the remnant are everywhere. 
They are in all streams of Christendom. You can find them in orthodoxy. You can find them in Pentecostalism. You can find them in charismatism. You can find them in reformed theology. You can find them in all these things. Those people who will know their God, they'll be strong. They'll do exploits. They'll mount up on wings like eagle. And brothers and sisters, for the sake of such people, the law released through this commission what is called systematic applied kingdom theology. Kingdom eschatology, rather. Systematic applied kingdom eschatology. S-A-K-E. And he gave a curriculum for that. It's all part of the Global School of Ministries, a particular section called Systematic Applied Kingdom Eschatology, the study of the end times. And it has a number of uh, 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 components. There are six components of that. Number one, dispensation, seasons, and times. This is the it shows the move of the Lord from the end of the flood of Noah until the end of the age. That's what it deals with, a comprehensive. It deals with Elohim's move to the lineage of Shem, you know, Shem, the firstborn of Elohim, the firstborn of Noah. Then he goes on to the, what he did with the descendants of Japheth, you know, the father of Europe, and then on to the end time, what he will do to the sons of Ham, redeemed by the blood. Whether they are harmed in Africa or in the diaspora, redeemed by the blood, a walk, a short walk they will do that will lead to the end of the age when the remnant of Shem, Ham, and Japheth will become the one new man who will be predominant in the earth rim, known by their common spiritual identity in the blood. The second is understanding the end times. This focuses on the various prophecies of what will precede the end of the times. The book of Daniel, the book of Isaiah, the book of Ezekiel, Jeremiah, that, and then Malachi, then what Yeshua said and what he said through Paul the Apostle, Peter, John, and the others, understanding the end times. And that, you need to know it. Then the third one is seven letters from heaven. The focus is Revelation 1, 2, and 3. The revelation the Lord, when he came to inspect the churches at Asia Minor, what he saw as the auditor of the church, as the inspector general of the church, what Yeshua saw in his church less than 70 years after he went to heaven. How his church had turned aside from the way, and only two were faithful, Philadelphia and Smyrna, the other five, Ephesus, Pegamos, Thyatira, Sardis, and Laodicea were out of the way under 70 years after Yeshua came. So this book looks at the seven letters, letters he wrote to those seven churches of Asia Minor. The number four is the, number four is the things to come, this particular one. The things to come, what next? It explores the various events the Bible indicated as when you see the first of them happen, you know that we are now within a few years of the return of the Lord. Without any sure, without any dis any disputation, the moment any of these seven, these six things we're going to be looking at happens, you know that it's now a matter of days. As a matter of fact, seven years, the Lord is returned. So the coming of the Lord, nobody knows until these things happen from the Bible that you know we're moved. Then the number five is the revelation unveiled. It's, it's a systematic verse by verse commentary on the book of Revelation from chapter 1 to chapter 22. And then the groundbreaking book titled Completing the Unfinished Reformation looks at the reformation of Martin Luther in 1517 and where he succeeded, where he didn't succeed, where there were issues, what were those issues, the things that he did not reform, he didn't bring about because he didn't know them or it wasn't given to him that needs to now be done. So these six books, they are all part of systematic applied kingdom theology in the Global School of Ministry curriculum. You can look, or look them up at the website, you know, www.kingdombusclub.com or you can look them up at www.gsom.ac The courses are presented in such a way that even obscure verses come to life by the inspiration of Holy Spirit. You know, 
because that's how Holy Spirit has guided the curriculum development process within the context of systematic applied kingdom eschatology the things to come what next offers a holistic exposition of the things the Bible has already talked about that will surely happen and when you see them happen you know that the end is finally here until the first of them happens, we are still in speculations. We don't know when. We don't know when. We don't know when this, this. But the moment the first of them happens, about three of them will happen in a bunch of a time. For instance, the first resurrection, the rapture of the saints, the rise of the Antichrist are three things that are going to be simultaneous. Then the great, you know, the, 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 the great tribulation Will, will, will go on as a function of what will happen when the Antichrist tries to rule Israel and first he will make friends with Israel, make a covenant of peace with Israel. Israel will feel relaxed with him and when he will now go to the temple and claim to be Elohim, you know what? They will refuse. They will say, no, Elohim is not a man. And he will get angry and want to stamp out all Jews and Jewry worldwide. These things are in the Bible. It's unfortunate that this tendency to talk about the stomach, what to eat, what to drink, has made Christians to forget the rich treasures in the Holy Bible. Brothers and sisters, the law, therefore, is helping us to have a proper understanding of things that are surely ordained to happen. I want to give you a little backup, a snapshot of the kingdom timeline. Remember one of the books we told you that Genesis chapter 1 is not just about creation of the world. Genesis chapter 1 is a story of Elohim making up his mind to extend his kingdom to the earth realm. So Genesis chapter 1 is kingdom given. Genesis chapter 2 is kingdom established by the decree the Lord gave the constitution of the kingdom, what to eat and what not to eat, and then marriage as an institution was put together in Genesis 2. Genesis 3 is not just about sin coming into the world, it's also a story of the kingdom lost when Adam and Eve allowed the enemy to trick them and take away the keys of the kingdom given to them. And Genesis 3.15 reveals that Elohim ordained that for the lost kingdom to be recovered, it will be through a personality called the seed of the woman and human history, especially the lineage of those who will bring forth the Messiah. is all about this prophecy about the seed of the woman from the day it was given. Everything that has happened on earth, especially the lineage of Shem, is was pointing towards that and after the flood Noah begets Shem and before you know it from Shem after a few generations you get Eber from Eber you know you get the father of Abraham from Abraham you now begin to get Isaac from Isaac to Jacob from Jacob to Judah and from Judah all the things about history all the way to David from David you know all the way the seed of the woman came and the Bible tells us two things about the recovery of the kingdom. First one is the incarnation. When he came as a baby in a manger in the womb of Mary, Luke 1, 26 to 35. And the assignment, he came as a lamb that will take away the sins of the whole world. Now that is what we see in Genesis, in Galatians 4, 4 and 5. When the fullness of time was come, Elohim sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that they might receive, we might receive the adoption of sons. And then that's the first part. He has come, he has finished it, he went to heaven. On a day known only to the Father, he shall will come physically to rule and reign in the earth realm. And this manifest kingdom will reveal the fullness of the great purpose of the Father for the redeemed. Because that's when we rule and reign with him. Between his first coming and the second coming, the Lord has ordained that certain things are going to happen. These things are in the Bible. And listen, I, we've said it several times. Every church should be a kingdom community. Following the curriculum of the kingdom, as in the Holy Bible, 
Every Christian should be able to know certain things fundamentally, not know them as head knowledge, but know them as heart knowledge, transforms us and causes us to be fully invested in the kingdom. So it's important for us to know the things to come. When we know them, it will cure us of two things. One, we avoid speculation of dates because it's improper and unbiblical. Two, we also need to know the clear markers of when these things will happen. So it makes sense to examine the scriptures, compare them with history and current affairs, so that we can know this thing that was spoken, this thing that was written, has it happened? If it's happened, we take it off. Is it happening now? We take note of them. Is it about to happen? We take note of them. For instance, if you read Matthew 24 from verse 4 all the way to verse 26, Yeshua gave an idea of things that will happen. But you know what? People tend to mistake that Matthew 24 is not talking about an event. He's talking about a number of things. In verse 3, the disciples wanted to know when the things he said will when are they going to happen? The destruction of the temple. Then what shall be the sign of the return of the Lord? And what will be the sign of end of the age? Three things. And so that was what he was answering. If we are in Yeshua, Holy Spirit will surely guide us to understand the times and know what to prioritize. The remnant is not appointed to destruction. Take note of this. The remnant of Elohim, he has not ordained them to be destroyed. He has not ordained them to walk blindfolded into the end of the age, stumble, hit your head against a stone or foot against a stone. No, he has given us assurance by himself. For instance, First Thessalonians chapter 5 says, But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For they, when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are the children of light. The children of the day, we are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep. As others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that are drunken are drunken in the night. Let us therefore who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Look at verse 9. For Elohim has not appointed us to rot, but to obtain salvation, by our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, who died for us, that whether we are awake or asleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as ye also do. Say, comfort yourself, edify, which is what we're doing. When you hear the word of truth, you are being comforted, you are being edified with the word, so that you don't need to be worried and anxious. The, the things of the end of the age are not supposed to breed fear or worry or anxiety. They are supposed to give us stability. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 from verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Yeshua, that you, and our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letters from us, as that that day of Yeshua is at hand. He said, don't let all this worry you about the day. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. I want you to take note. The Lord's day will not come until, one, the falling away, which is what is happening now. There's such a veering away from the truth, the balanced truth of the scripture. People are tilting to the left or to the right. And people are tilting this way, that way. But the centrality of the gospel, people are falling away from it. 
She said it will happen first. Then also said the man of sin will be revealed, the son of perdition. So Yeshua will not return physically until the Antichrist on earth. As a matter of fact, Yeshua, one of the coming, one of the purpose of his coming is to defeat the armies of the Antichrist and the false prophet at the Battle of Armageddon and consign them to the lake of fire. Then he will set up his kingdom here on earth for a thousand years. These things the religion will not teach you. So it's so important to know that the most critical response, therefore, is to obey his clear instructions to watch and pray. Those who are watchful will discern some things when they are due. As they pray into the situation, the Holy Spirit reveals to them they secure an insurance just as a wise virgin did, unlike their foolish counterparts. You know, Matthew 25 the wise virgins took extra oil in their lamps. The foolish did not take. And when nobody was thinking about, in the middle of the night, the cry came, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Brothers and sisters, by giving us the word, the Lord wants to arm us with extra oil so that we will not be blown apart. We will not go and slumber. When we know the truth about what is to come, it will help to shape our perspective. It will help to shape our heart, our attitude, it will help us to know what to hold on to and what to hold with open hands. What are those things? The synopsis of this course. What are we going to study? Number one, the first resurrection of the righteous dead. Number two, the rapture of saints because these two are almost together. But the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 to 18, it says that those who are alive will not precede those who passed on. Those who pass on, as at the day this will happen, the Bible said they will rise first before the living and righteous. So we're going to look at this first two. The first resurrection, the righteous dead. Two, the rapture of saints. Three, the rise and rule of the Antichrist and the false prophet. One of the most detailed description of the Antichrist is the revelation the Lord gave that is going to be given in this course. As a matter of fact, I believe the Lord lost us enough to give us in granular detail what he said in the book of Daniel, what he said in the book of Matthew, what he said in the Pauline epistles, what he said in the book of Revelation, what he said in the Johannine epistles, that you bring it together, you have a clear idea who the Antichrist will be. And let me say this to you. Satan is a master of deception. He's made a lot of Christians to believe that the Antichrist is going to be one Islamic person in a cave. His many believe he's going to come from the Middle East. He's going to come from there and there. But what this course will do is to give us something that is going to make us to be a little bit careful. Because we're going to have some real good tips from the Lord. Then number four, the great tribulation. Yeshua said in Matthew 24, 14, this will be the worst period of life in the earth dream, that nothing has been like it. Not even the Holocaust is going to be, has been like it, will be like it. So it makes sense for us to know what will happen. What will happen to Christians who miss the rapture? That they will go through the great tribulation. So it makes sense if you know. So you can know what to prioritize now. To say, you know what? I don't want to miss the rapture. I don't want to be part of the great tribulation. Then there's a way we'll live. Number five, the marriage, the heavenly events. When the church is raptured, what will happen next? The, the, the judgment seat of Yeshua will go there. And after the judgment seat of Yeshua, where people will know the reward for how they live, it's not a judgment for sin, it's a judgment for rewards, and then have an experience of that heavenly realm, Yeshua said he's going to prepare a place, and then the marriage supper of the Lamb, and then the return of the earth with Yeshua to defeat the armies of the Antichrist, and then the second coming of Yeshua, you know, and the battle of Armageddon is all put together right there. Men and brethren, these issues are part of the end of our faith, should not be relegated as unimportant. This course could, will be an instrument in the hand of Holy Spirit to enable us to prepare for the time that is soon to come. So that those of us who dwell on the earth, we're not going to cut napping. 
And from a chronological point of view, the things to come, what next, is a natural successor to the groundbreaking work understanding the end times. Reading and understanding both will equip saints with revelations of things to come. And that is to say, the Lord will enable us to be in a place that we are not going to be caught napping. So we're going to end here for this introduction and prologue by Wolver Simon. Please share with us three things you receive from this lesson. And two, what are your expectations from this course? We'll come to the end today and then we'll continue, you know, later in the lesson two in this evening. And by the grace of the Lord, we trust him that he will give us light from heaven. He will breathe life upon his word. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to receive from you concerning the things to come what next lord have your way and glorify yeshua lord lay hold of us plow our hearts that we may bring forth fruit 30 fold 60 fold 100 fold out of this lesson that will be so equipped that will connect with all you'll be revealing lord i just pray that you will enable all of us to share this message far and wide and your name will be exalted as we continue with you. In Yeshua Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching. And we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook, Monday, all the way to Sunday, every day. By about 10.30 a.m. UK time. And that's the same at Nigerian time. And you, it's either Apostle George, Monday to Friday, uh, to Thursday, Pastor Grace, uh, Friday to Sunday. And then in the evening of Sunday, we have two sessions from 5.30 to about 6, after 6, another one up to 7. So please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it. We also visit our website, www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks. This course you just listened to, all these lessons, you know, there's an ebook we have free of charge. Everything we do is free. But more importantly, you can actually do your program on, you know, ebooks. You can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want you can also if you want to do the yes course or be, do the master class you can go to www.kingdomboostclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it you can also subscribe to our channels this youtube gsom.tv and we also have a telegram channel gsom media you can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of Yeshua, Jesus, is empowered with truth. Remember, it is the teach, train, equip, activate, and release paradigm. Absolutely free of charge. Have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon.